Hi, I hope everyone sees me fine. I'm Billy, director of Studio 270, and we'll get started in just a minute. We'll be doing quilling, a quilling craft. It looks like we have a viewer and it's seven o'clock already. So hi, I'm Billy Moffat from the Gail Borden Public Library where I'm director of Studio 270. And today we're going to do a quilling craft. Quilling is an excellent craft to do. There is no real recorded history of where it started. There was um, found in Egypt as well as it was done in the Renaissance by monks and nuns to illuminate uh, biblical text. And then it was very popular in Victorian times where gentle young ladies could do quilling crafts because it was a proper thing to do. Now I was, uh, I was introduced to quilling by my great aunts, Mag and Ellen. And then I taught myself through books and experiences, and it's a great thing to do, but it's quite time intensive. So today we're gonna add to this card right here. Now with quilling, it's quite easy. The only thing you need is paper, something to quill with, and glue. Now they do make quilling paper that comes in 1 8 of an inch, three eighths inch wide and five eighths inch wide. But if you don't have special quilling paper, cause I know it's really hard to find. I got these ones online because of back in the day we would have to drive to Ben Franklin's to get it. But today, if you don't have any quilling paper, you can cut your own out of almost any paper, construction paper, card stock, computer paper, and just cut it into strips, all identical, one eighth, three eighths, five eighths, but today I'll be quilling with one eighth inch wide paper. Now you need to quill with a needle, something to spin your paper around with. Now this is a quilling needle. I use this, but you can use almost anything. This is a quilling slotted tool that has a little slot in between so you can help you guide it but it's not necessary to have specialized tools. You can quill with a hat pen. Here's a little decorative pen from one of my great, great aunts. I've quilled with darning needles, knitting needles, and here's one from a pottery. It's a pottery scribe tool that I've quilled with. But my favorite thing is just a plain old quilling needle that you can quill with any needle that you have. So today we're going to do two types of quilling and I'm just going to bend my camera down so you can see my hands better. So what we're going to do is spin the needle, the paper around the needle. To help that out, I have a little damp sponge here that I'm going to press the paper to just to make it a little wet and make it a little more pliable and it will help it go around the needle better. I am just going to press the paper to the pad of my finger and roll until the paper is on the needle. And I'm just gonna spin and spin it around. If it ever gets wobbly, I just push it together and clean it with my fingers. So I'm just spinning it around. Until it becomes one. Now I can also take it off and just finish spinning just in my hands, just like this. Sometimes the needle becomes unruly. Now the flower I'm making today has five petals that are exactly the same size. So to make it the same size, I have a specialty quilling apparatus here that will make each of them the same size. 
But if you don't have that, no problem. I just took a piece of cardstock here and drew down a circle that I could make it all the same size. When I started quilling, I just eyeballed it and that worked out fine as well. So now I'm gonna take this and the end is loose there. So I am going to glue it down onto itself. A lot of quilling books will tell you to get a special glue tool with a needle nose, but I find just a little glue on the end of a paintbrush is the most excellent tool. I keep a little water nearby so I can keep my paintbrush fresh. And when I'm done, I just wash it with a little mild dish soap. And ivory soap works the best to clean your paintbrushes. So now this is done. From here, I have a little divot where I glued the end together. So I want to keep track of that because I want to hide that in my original piece. To make our little flower here, we're going to have to bend our circle. So what I can do is just pinch it on one side, folding it, and now I have a petal shape. But I want my flower to have points on both sides, so I'm just going to squeeze the other side. Now I've already made my other little circles, so I'm just going to find the, where, the end where I glued it together. And I'm just going to pinch the two together to make a little eye shape, puffing it up. Found my ends, pinch together until I have five. Pinch together until I have five. Last one. Oops. Last one. Now pinch it together, puff it up to give it a little shape. Now I'm going to glue my flower together. And for that, I'm going to use a piece of cork board that I have wrapped in paper. Now, quilling suppliers will try to sell you this, but when I work on big pieces, I just use a regular cork board that I've wrapped in plastic, like um, saran wrap, or stick a little one inside a Ziploc bag. You want to have it wrapped in plastic because you're going to glue the pieces together now, and you don't want the glue to stick to the cork. You don't want your paper to stick to cork. So I have that one, and I'm just going to take this together and stick them together. I've glued them together. Now, I don't want to have to hold them together, so I'm just going to use straight, regular old sewing straight pens into the cork board to hold them in place so I don't have to, and I can continue gluing. I'll glue the Third piece down, I'm just going to stick a pin inside. And here's my fourth piece. Stick that down. And now for my fifth piece, I'm going to glue on both sides because I'm going to stick that in the middle. I'm just going to take my straight pin and I'm going to shove it into the center so it sticks in the middle. And there we go. Clean off my paintbrush so my glue doesn't dry on my brush. Now we're going to make the little center of the flower. We're going to make the little center of the flower. I have my sponge. I have the paper that I'm going to use. And I'm just going to press it down on my finger and curl it around, trying to keep it as straight as possible. 
when you're curling the paper, if you don't keep it straight, it can kind of be a little wonky when you try to glue it together. So, a little cut. so you want to keep it as straight as possible. Point, so I'm just going to roll it by hand now. Rolling it all the way to the end. And now I'm going to glue down this piece without letting it unfurl because I want it to be tight. There is a little divot in it where I ro rolling wasn't 100% smooth, so I'm just going to press down with my, my thumbs against my thumbnail to make it flatter. Now I'm going to unpin my pink flower. It's all the glue is dried, and I'm going to be way more generous with this glue because it has to sit down in the center. And I'm just gonna press it down hard. Generally, I'm very conservative with the amount of glue I use because I don't want, even though I'm using, even though I'm using a clear glue, I don't want it to be shiny against the paper and then I can just take my card and find where I want to place it. And put glue down on the back of it. Gently rubbing over all the pieces. and pressing it down. Now I have made a one of a kind greeting card for someone to love. You can find quilling books, how-to guides, and inspiration ideas on Hoopla. Check out Melissa Bernasek's video on Hoopla if you want to learn how to check out books on your iPad, computer, Android device, or more, check out a book on quilling or some kind of other paper craft. If you're a high school student, because this is great for high school or adults, if you're a high school student, come and visit me in Studio 270 when the library is open if you want to learn how to do more interesting and individual crafts. It's a great thing to do because people love something that's handmade and everybody is going to appreciate your one of a kind handmade craft. Thank you so much and have a great time watching all the other videos on Facebook Live. Have a great night.